but uh, this is uh, being handled well. This is the first day of the orientation. I've been served by the member from Zogo. Yes, the member from the Honorable Okumu Gabriel. Okumu Gabriel, Angel Gabriel. Thank you. He's the only one with the sanitizer. Uh, thank you very much. He's Angel Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I can now remove my mask so that you can see my full body language. Is that okay? Good morning. My name is Jacob Olanya. I'm a member of parliament. You gave me additional responsibility and I'm grateful to you and to God for making this possible. I came in the middle of this proceedings because the protocol people kept telling me you were not ready. I was ready at 8.30 but couldn't come because the last communication I got that there were only 15 members. You cannot come. So I stayed and I stayed and I stayed. By the time they were calling me, you were here and the presentation started. Let's keep time, honorable members. Let's try our best to keep time. The honorable member just walking in, I've heard some rumors about him. We pray that we are able to confirm those rumors very soon. The honorable Matthias Zampuga from Masaka. We have heard that he has been placed in some place and we need to deal with. Honorable members, I'm here to open this meeting. It's already open. So what I'm going to do is make a contribution to the discussion. If there is anything important for you, especially those, those of you coming to Parliament for the first time, it is this meeting. Because it's opening for you a chapter you may have been remotely aware of, but now it's the real thing. You have to play it, play by it, and do it. It's the only thing you learn about how you are able to prepare all those things that disturb people in your areas, your respective areas, and deal with the question, how do I put my issue on the agenda of parliament? How do I get people galvanized support in parliament of 529 members to stand with me and achieve what I must? For those who sent me here. This is it. How do I play within the four corners of the constitution and the rules and deliver for the people of this country but also for my people? This is it. How do I do what? At what time to achieve what? This is it. So I would like you to be, to interest yourself in the discussions taking place today and tomorrow because it's critically important that you do. Honorable Katundu has already opened the discussions, so I will not open it again. You cannot open an open door. Orientation is important. The word says orientation. And this is the first time ever that we are dealing with the rules, at least since my experience of the seventh parliament. I don't know about the eighth parliament because I was not there. The ninth parliament, I was there. The tenth parliament, I was there. I do not remember this. You are the lucky ones. I remember when I joined parliament in the seventh parliament, my induction took two weeks. And where was it? In the chamber of parliament. And who was presiding? The former speaker, the immediate former speaker, James Luapahabulo. He sat in the speaker's chair and blew open to us the rules of procedure and practices of parliament, both here and the broader commonwealth, how we get things done properly. I was there with Honorable Katuntu and a few others. Many of us paid attention and concentrated in what James Wapabulu was telling us. And we turned out the way we did. 
And when they are selecting people who should come and make comments and presentation on rules of procedures, some of us who sat in the sessions of Wapahabulo are chosen. Others are not because they never paid attention. So never got quite into the detail to learn the tricks of how you do these things and do them properly. They never got to do it. So they remain like that. And we remain like this. That's why Naboka Tundu can competently come and talk about rules of procedure. And many others cannot. Be the Rulanyas, be the Katuntus, when you finish this session. Next parliament, the other meetings, you should be called to educate people on rules of procedure. You should be called across country, Kenya, Tanzania, Sudan, to talk to parliamentarians about rules of procedure. You should be able to speak to district councillors and teach them how to handle business in the house. But that can only happen if you understand what's going on these next two days. It's critically important. You took oath, you were given two books. One is called the Constitution, the other one is Rules of Procedure of Parliament. Both are critically important. You cannot cram them, don't waste time. You cannot read them like the Bible, don't waste time. Take your time and go slowly to understand them. And in my presentation today, I'm going to give you the fundamental principles of how you understand these rules of procedure in five paragraphs, not paragraphs, five sentences. Five sentences that summarize the principles of parliamentary practice and procedure, just five. Understand those five and the distributions will be easier. The law of quorum that Ronaldo Batunto was talking about will become simply something you fit in. I'll be dealing with those five principles shortly. We do this because rules must be set before the game. Not during the game, not after the game. You must understand these rules. That's why they are set before engagement. When we begin to engage, we apply our rules of engagement. So you must understand them. When you agree that the rules are not working, you amend them. When you agree that some parts of the rules don't make sense, you take them out. But at least you know them. We do this before so that when you go to play the game, you play by the rules. Some of us are called too strict because I don't know what else to follow. I just follow these simple rules. If there was an alternative for something for me to follow, I would gladly do it, honorable members. But for now, I only have the rules of procedure. And I'll stick by it. Let's all stick by it. Makes business very easy. They'll be telling you what is actually in the rules of procedure. Oh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I had not yet realized you. I had not noticed that you had come with. Welcome. They'll tell you about order of business, structure of existing legislation, membership of committees, all those things these people will be telling you. For me today, I want to talk to you about the four prin five principles of parliamentary practice and procedure. And I'll try to break them down for you to, to, for you to see how simple the rules are. The first principle, please write this down, because I think it is important. That's how you derive your respect. First principle, every member of parliament has rights equal to any other member of parliament. It does not matter that that member is in the minority. It does not matter that member is in the majority. It doesn't even matter which region that member comes from. Every member has rights equal to any other member in this house. So you accord that member that right, that respect. Whatever is accorded to any member of parliament must be accorded to each one of them without any segregation. Whether you are going to talk about how you pick people to speak, respect that. 
And from that, from that, so many things come up. And the details will be broken down for you. Second principle of this equality that you have, only one member is allowed the attention of the house at any one time. You are equal, yes, but only one of you can be given the attention of the house at any given time. So the speaker picks Gabriel Okumu, he stands up to speak, that is his time. Nobody must interfere. And then the rules create exceptions on how you can interfere with this time. They call it interruption of debate. Because the member has the right to hold the house for the time given to him by the speaker, uninterrupted. And then there's another rule which creates the exception. Interruption of debate. Point of order. Point of procedure. Point of information. These days I hear rude extension of inquiry. Of, they don't exist in the rules. But then there are also points of privilege. Those ones, the, my colleagues here will break them down to you. Because you are now qualifying. In this thing, every member has a right equal to any other member. And only one of them is allowed the attention of the house at any given time. But if that member is proceeding with that right, the exception allowed for interruption of that member in an orderly way. It's a speaker point of information. Point of information is up to the member to accept and don't insist. When you say, Point of information, I'm holding the phone and I've just ignored you. Don't insist. It's rude to insist. I simply don't want that information. So hold your information. I have sufficient information. But when I accept, don't misuse the time. Give me that information which you'd like to give the house through me. Point of order. That one, we have no choice. We have had a very humorous incident where a member is holding the floor, then they say, point of order. Then he says, who are you ordering? <laughs> and uh, this, this particular member is, is very dear to the house because of this way of doing things. And the order for what, who are you ordering? And uh, this, this one happened to be a general. So now imagine ordering a general. But of course, in parliamentary practice and procedure, a point of order is a point of order. You can, the only person you cannot raise it upon is the speaker. Any other member, whether the member is speaking, whether the member is sitting, whether the member, is, whatever is happening in the house. Somebody is reading a newspaper, the house is proceeding, you can still raise a point of order. Procedure. Now, there is this habit which I would like to discourage strongly. Point of information. Point of information. Okay, point of order. Now, that's bad manners. And the eleventh parliament, please don't do bad manners. They affect the operation of proceedings. And somehow they make the speaker uneasy. And when the speaker becomes uneasy, things become very difficult. Because now it might be stopping everybody from raising any points of order. So let's play by the rules. If you have information which you must give, give it. Ask for the member to allow you to give it. If the member declines it, don't insist. Just stop. So do not turn points of information into points of order. Because order is about breach of proceedings. Uh, that a member has contact. Then, of course, you have to, the details will be broken down to you. So, one, every member has rights 
equal to any other member. Two, only one of them is allowed the attention of the House at any given time. Three, every proposition brought to the House must receive a fair, balanced, full debate and a decision. So we don't just speak here for entertainment. We speak because we want to take a decision as the August House. A proposition can come in the, po in the, point, in the, in the form of a bill, in the form of a budget document, in, in the form of a motion, in the form of everything. That is the proposition. And the speaker will propose the question, I now propose the question that this be done. I open debate. Then you start. But that debate must be balanced. I must look on my left where people from the opposition are constituted, where the independent members are sitting, and I must look on my right where the NRM members are sitting who form the majority in the House and balance the debate. Why do we balance this debate? You want that by the time that decision is taken, there's ownership. Everybody owns it because they have all debated to the best of their ability. What I encourage more is that that debate should be evidence-based. We should stop the habit of throwing figures. Uh, there, 45% of Uganda is quote your source because you are speaking on record. Your speech will be quoted by researchers, researchers in future. Don't throw figures from your head. If you must throw figures and statistics, quote the source. So that we are a solid house of evidence. Now, fourth, the will of the majority must carry. And the majority has nothing to do with party, by the way. Some people think majority is about party. No. Majority might be about the number of people supporting a particular proposition. And they can come from any side of the house. I have had debates in the house where the opposition on the matter was coming from the NRM. On the propositions coming from their own government. And the main opposition was coming from NRM. Those situations have been there. What it simply means is that members have decided to exercise their rights as members of parliament, representing people who could not be here and speaking on their behalf. That proposition, which has been brought by our own government, is not right. So they oppose it. They join the opposition in opposing it. So let's not think that majority and minority is about parties in this house. Majority and minority in this house will depend on the issue at hand. It will depend on the issue at hand. And it does not even matter where that issue arose from. It may have arisen from my left side of the house or from my right side of the house. For, for as long as it can galvanize majority support, it becomes a majority decision. So let's not focus on parties too much. Because now this is a national parliament. What we are going to process is no longer a party matter. It's about the people of this country and the must take. So every purpose, uh, no, no. The will of the majority must, that the rights of the minority must be respected and protected. And from that stems this animal called minority reports. Because yes, the majority, the majority of the, the committee have taken a decision on a particular line. But because we recognize that one core principle is that while the will of the majority will carry, the rights of the minority must be respected. So we create an animal called minority report. And there's something that has to be understood about minority reports. Some people think now by drafting a minority report, now you cannot sign the main report. No. Because your minority opinion might be on just one aspect of a 15 aspect report. You agree with the 14, 
you di disagree with the one. So the, the ones you agree with, you sign. One time I had them disturbing this man, I had to protect him. He had signed the main report and also presented minority report. But how can you do that? It's only right to do. I agree with the most of the things. I only disagree with one aspect. And my minority, minority report is in that regard only. The rest I agree. So we must make this di uh, distinction as we begin to play these rules to facilitate things that will help our people. My colleagues here will give you the details. Five and last, the aspirations, desires, whatever, of each member of parliament must be subsumed in the general purpose of the assembly. In other words, you are not here as honorable member for, where is that place in Vera? As honorable Moses. from Chekui. You are not here as there. You are here as part of all these people. You get the point? So whatever your aspirations are, your actions, even conduct, you must do it knowing whatever you do, you can easily bring this entire group of intelligent and dignified people into disrepute by your conduct. So your aspirations, your desires must be subsumed in the bigger purpose of the assembly. And that is why you have incidents of, I am going to make a, personal st a statement of personal explanation. You are going to do that because your colleague, whose reputation by your conduct has been called into question, you owe it to them. To come and say, no, honorable member, the publication that came, some aspect of it was true, but these ones were not true. For the part that are true, I apologize to you all, but these are not true, I'll see how to handle it other ways. But I apologize for these ones or oh, not. If it is not true at all, you also come and say, honorable members, and you can even still say, I apologize for it coming up at all, if it went was untrue. Personal explanation comes from this principle and so many others. So, I'm closing. For you to enjoy this house, make humor and laughter your good friend. Don't come here with a, a frown face, annoyed all the time. No, it doesn't help you. You grow old for nothing. Absolutely growing old for nothing. When each time you are coming to this house, you are breathing fire, you are angry, as if... No, it does not help. Even difficult disagreements, you can resolve through a very humorous presentation. You don't have to shout. That's why somebody one time said, and I like it very much, he said, we must sharpen our arguments but not our voices. Each time you sharpen your voice, your face just goes, <laughs> the lines come in where there are no lines. And those lines can easily remain there if you continue exercising your face that way for a long time. There is no point. Humor, laughter, a speaker presiding there. If some, if it's fun, in parliament it's fun. If somebody starts a, 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 you know, a, a humorous kind of intervention, and so, it's not for the speaker to kill it. The speaker must also facilitate the humor to, to go up, and the whole house goes in flames of laughter. I discover that we process more business if the house is happy. We do less if everybody is annoyed. So the deputy speaker and myself will try our best to put the house in its best mood, so that business can flow. Give you one example of how you can play about with humor. And this happened in the House of Commons in Westminster, London. And you see this very often in the South African Parliament. Recently I watched one where 
I remember a complaint that the president was, was, pointing, was pointing a finger at her. And then uh, the member put Rose on a point of order. But the president was pointing a finger at her. So the speaker, of course that was humor. If you took that seriously, you would be counted for a fool. The president is pointing a finger at this. So the speaker, carrying on the humor, said, could the president please withdraw the finger? <laughs> and then the president got up, there was a time of uh, Jacob Zuma said, I stand here, Madam Speaker, to withdraw the finger. <laughs> you, you get it? And everybody goes laughing like that. And the public joins in, those who are watching. Keep it light. The last example let me give you. A member of parliament in the UK called another member a street dog. Of course that's bad. And the uh, member who was called a street dog got up almost angry. He said, Mr. Speaker, this cannot be accepted by our rules. Could the honorable member be ruled out, out of order? And we would draw those offensive remarks. Well, the speaker said, no, those are not right. Remove them from the record. So the member got up, Mr. Speaker, I apologize. But can I just remove the word street and leave dog? Because the honorable member is really a dog. <laughs> and the house laughed again. And the members, of course, was offended again. He wrote, Mr. Speaker, is it in order for this honorable colleague to continue to insult another member? He was again ruled out of order and asked to withdraw. So the man gets up the third time. Mr. Speaker, I apologize. I will withdraw this offensive remarks. I will withdraw the word street dog. I also will withdraw the word dog. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? All the street dogs in England will be very happy because this house has refused to associate this member with them. This time, even the member who was affected started laughing. Everybody just laughed because the wit had beaten the other person's wit completely. And the humor was just amazing. And the house laughed. Business continued. Let's keep it light. This is the moment given to us by God Almighty that we should deliver. We dedicate this whole institution to God, but use it for God's purposes. Look after its people. Because whatever, whatsoever we do, we must do to the least of our people in this country. That must be our focus. So with these few words, I hope they were few. I leave you in the hands of these very able people, the Honorable Obofo Boss, very knowledgeable, she had the legal committee for a long time. The Honorable Kenneth Doctor, PhD in law. Kenneth Ongalo Obote. Those are real legal gurus. They'll be able to take us through this. And at the end of tomorrow, we will be ready for debate. And I'll be ready. And Madam Speaker will be ready to manage those debates, which will try as much as possible to structure in the best interest of the people who sent us here. I now declare this meeting open. May the blessings of God be upon you. Thank you.